phone. Found it. So, kind of as the title states, what I wanted to go over today is Texas 2K, guys. Uh, let's face it, it's the end all be all of events. Uh, I live here in the Northeast, up in Pennsylvania, and we have an event called Cruise Week. For us, that's kind of like our Super Bowl. Uh, it's kind of like the Super Bowl of street racing for us. Um, it's a big event. Um, it's actually technically, it's bigger than Texas 2K by a, a lot, but it doesn't have the same caliber of cars. Now, they had the classics, it has Supras, you have the GTRs, you have the new muscle cars and stuff, but it's more of like a cruising. It's the whole point of the name, it's Cruise Week. Um, and it's an awesome event, but it doesn't have the Lamborghinis, the, the, the notoriety of all the street racing at night, the, street, uh, the racing during the day from TX2K itself. Um, I know TX2K itself has separated itself from the street racing, even the videos now at 1320 releases, there's two separate ones, Texas Street Nights, I believe, and then there's Texas 2K because Peter Block wants nothing to do with the street racing and anything affiliated with it because, well, it kind of looks bad on him and I don't think he really wants the police on him, but that's just my opinion. Um, my whole point of this is to kind of give you guys a rundown of what is TX2K and where has it been. Um, I think a lot of people have a misconstrued idea of how it all started, so I'm going to try and do the best I could. Um, it started in the late 90s. Peter Block had actually started the event in Texas. Um, it actually started out very small, nothing like it is today. Um, it used to be Super Nationals. I mean, that's what it used to be. People kind of forget that, but it started out as a Super event. Um, and it was like that way pretty much up until 2009, 2010. I would say 2011 was the last year where the Super had a real big presence, and after that, it's really, it's really fallen off in the GTR and the Lamborghini and other platforms have taken over. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the car is a great car, but it was no longer king. Through the 2000s, if you didn't have a Supra, you weren't the best. And I'm not trying to talk shit or talk up the car, but that's how it was. There's a reason why the cars have this dick magnet level to them where every guy sees them, they think they're so cool. Throughout the 2000s, if you're born and raised or born and raised in the 90s, late 80s, and grew up through the 2000s, that was the car to have. That was what everyone raced, and it was the king. It was the king of the street. It was the king of the track. It was the king of everything. Like it just won. Every event, if you had a Supra for the most part and you had it built right, it won the event. Uh, the 2JZ could handle a super amount of power. Uh, for the, At that time, nothing was holding the power like a 2JZ was. Um, now you have the newer motors now that are holding an absurd amount of power without anything done internally, but at the time, if you didn't have a 2JZ, 300 horsepower, 400 horsepower maybe is what you were making, boosting it and then you were running into issues. 2JZ, 800, 900 all day long, and just fucking killing it. Uh, it had the V160, it had the stock rear end in them. The reason the car was so cool for the time was because of all these things, but that's kind of getting off subject, but that's what TX2K was. It was Super Nationals, it was the event to be at, and that's how I grew up. I remember reading about it on Super Forums in 2003, 2004, when I really started to get into the whole Super game. Um, obviously, I couldn't afford one, I was just starting to drive. But it was the event to go to, and I couldn't believe the amount of cars and all the Supers there and the horsepower they're putting out. It amazed me. Um, and as the years kind of went on, it stayed a Super event, but as soon as the GTR came out, there was like an automatic shift. Everyone already started talking about it that the event's no longer going to be Super Nationals, it's going to kind of fall off. And to be honest, everyone was right. As soon as the GTR came out, I mean, it was quick. By 2011 or so, the GTR was starting to take over. Then the underground racing started to become real big. Then you had the GT40, uh, the newer Mustang came out. Then you had the release of the Camaro. These kind of newer cars, better technology, better body. I mean, the Supra was now 20 some years old. It was just its time and it's still a great car and it's still a great platform, but to compete with modern day cars and the technology in them is very hard compared to well, the 2000s when the car was a big hit. Um, TX2K is the end-all be-all event. It is row racing, it is street, street racing at night, not TX2K, I know. It is drag racing, it's a little bit of everything. They used to actually have road racing instead of row racing. Now that row racing has become such a big thing, they've canceled out the whole road racing event and now that's what they have on the first day, which today's Thursday, it's the beginning of tech, TX2K and this is the first day of events. Now tomorrow, I believe, is qualifying for drag racing and the bikini contest, I believe, is on Friday night. Um, they'll have all that stuff set up. So it's a pretty cool event. It's something I've always wanted to go to. Um, I want to hear your guys' opinions on this. Who else has been searching all over the internet already for TX2K events? Be honest. I know I've already been searching. I'm hitting up YouTube. I'm hitting up Facebook, checking all the discussion pages, getting on the forums, which I never even check forums anymore. And I'm getting on those just to get any bit of information I can on this event because it's that important to me. Um, I'd like to hear your guys' feedback on this and what y'all think. Um, I kind of wish it was still Super Nationals because I'm a diehard Super guy. 
they really don't cover them as much anymore. I kind of used to buy the DVDs they used to offer, 1320, all the older ones and stuff. I own them all and it used to be nothing but super content. And it's kind of hard for me now that it's, it's GTRs and stuff, which I understand, but it just doesn't have any attachment to me or for me anymore. So I want to hear you guys' feedback. What do you think of the event? What do you think of where the event's going? And do you guys even know what TX2K is? Let me know. What's your big event in your area? I want to hear about it. Do you have a big car meet? Do you have a big event? Do you have a big drag race in your area? Tell me about it in the comments below. I want to hear your opinions and what you guys think. As I usually do, I'm going to go ahead and give you an update in the car. Uh, the clutch is supposed to be here today. Didn't show up. Just got my update from UPS saying it's being delayed one day. It'll be here tomorrow. We're we'll just going to kind of make a video for you guys tonight of how to install the clutch. Um, and kind of give you guys a rundown. I know you guys kind of like those how-to videos, so I was going to do a how-to of install clutch. That it was a six-puck clutch master, so I guess I'm going to have to delay that by a day or maybe a little bit because it's my wife's birthday weekend, so it's going to be a little bit hard. Any one of you guys that watched the last one, I think I said something like Tuesday on Thursday or something stupid of that nature. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I think I was talking about the clutch and I kept thinking Thursday for some reason, whatever. Uh, I kept saying she's going to be turning Tuesday on Thursday or Thursday on Tuesday, something stupid of that nature. So good catch guys. I'm an idiot. I get it. I know, but I do. I'm glad you guys thought it was funny at least. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm waiting for parts. It sucks, man. I hate waiting on parts. I think you all hate waiting on parts. I think you guys want to see the constant updates. I'm trying to do these daily video logs or updates for you, and it's hard when I don't have prime content. Like, I love to give you guys some real in-depth content if I can do it every single day. That's why I'm trying to contact companies and try to get some type of sponsorship um, so I can do constant updates. If there's anyone out there willing to sponsor channel or willing to send me parts, uh, I don't need cash money. I just need parts to work on the car to constantly have updates and test things out. Like I love doing reviews and updates on stuff for the car. Anything for the 2JZ or the Super Platform makes me super happy. So anything you guys can send me or any companies you guys can recommend. Um, I've contacted a couple companies. I've had very good feedback so far. Um, I'm trying to get a hold of some of the bigger companies. I'm getting a little bit of pushback from them, which is understandable. They're kind of like, why am I going to give you free parts, bro? I, I, I'm going to have people pay for them. Why am I going to give them to you for free? So I get it, but I'm trying to get as much as I can. So if you guys can help me out there, I'd appreciate it. Let me know what you guys can find for me. One last thing I wanted to talk with you guys about real quick was I had a couple people ask me how, how and which rear tail housing did I use for this? Just so you guys know, this is still technically an MK3 super transmission with just a chaser rear housing on it. So now what did that mean exactly? So this came with a different style housing. Let me go ahead and grab it and show you. And as you can see, the rear housings are different. This uses an internal gate for the shifter. This uses an external. So what's that mean? That means this physical shifter is actually located inside where the trans would be itself. So how do I explain this to you guys? The lever itself is actually physically inside and fluid actually sees the bottom part of the shifter itself. So in heavy acceleration, as you guys can see here on the top of this, fluid actually comes up inside where the shifter would be. And on heavy acceleration, that fluid comes back and actually comes up through the shifter itself or back through the rear seal. Now, I still may have that same issue with this coming out the rear seal, but I will not have the issue coming up out the shifter. Um, that's something I just didn't want to deal with and I never had a problem with it on my W58, even on heavy acceleration and stuff. Now, obviously, I'll be going a lot faster with this, but I mean, going uphill or anything like that and then flooring it and going 100, 110 miles an hour, I never had a single issue with fluid coming out the rear. So I'm hoping I never have an issue with this R154, but I did know for a fact that I had multiple friends say that fluid comes up out the shifter and I didn't want to have to deal with that with this. So I went ahead and ditched this. Plus I was told because of the fact that it has an external, it actually shifts a little bit smoother. Um, being inside, I was told makes it a little bit clunkier and feels like a truck transmission. So that's why I went ahead and swapped out the rear housing. Uh, ben Free just happened to have it. Um, only downside is it's old and crusty. This one here was actually bead blasted and cleaned kind of like the center casing is here. Um, but to me, I'm not going to see it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but just want to give some people a little bit of insight on that if you guys were wondering or had an idea how this all works. So should be in soon enough. Uh, a little frustrating that it's not in yet, but it is what it is. Well, that's that for this one, guys. Thank you very much as usual. I appreciate you for tuning in. Um, if there's anything you guys need, please hit me up as usual. My Facebook page is Pure Function Engineering or send me a direct message on Instagram at Pure Function underscore. Still have t-shirts for sale, 25 bucks shipped anywhere in the lower 48 states. Thank you very much guys. Talk to you later. Peace.